Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY Dollar Tree 32 inch long sleigh that's going to be less than $10, even if you have to buy all the stuff. Um, you're going to use two of these yard candy canes and we're going to use one of this like shelf razor. It's basically the one that basically elevates your cabinet shelves. We're going to use one piece of post board. We're actually going to use less than one piece. Um, and then we're going to use one piece of foam board. Um, poster board is just the thin oak tag. Foam board is the one that basically has the foam in the middle. We're going to use my favorite utility knife, but you could use whatever one you like. This one's from the Dollar Tree. Actually, all of these products are from the Dollar Tree. I also found this wrapping paper, but I wanted to tell you that you can do any different finish on it if you want. If you're going to use the wrapping paper, we're going to use some Aleene's Tacky Spray Adhesive. Dollar Tree does sell spray glue, but if you don't want to, you can just pick paint of your choice. And then we're going to use some of this wire edge burlap which again is choice and I'll show you the options. And then you're gonna use this three pack of jute from the tool bench section. This is really what makes it economical because you're gonna need just about exactly all three rolls. And then here's that, guess what I did with this item? This is the cat litter pan. Um, the cat litter pan can be found in the pet section. Thank you to Sarah Jane from Chic on the Cheap for inspiring me to actually see that this thing existed. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is you want to peel off that sticker. I know that's weird to put this in there, like how, why you're leaving the sticker off. But I will tell you, I left some of the residue from this on this particular, this sticker on this particular candy cane. And it was just a pain in the butt. We'll just say that to try to wrap the jute neatly. Um, so what we're doing here is I wanted to show you how we got it started. Put a little dab of hot glue to secure the twine a little bit of the jute going around then we're going to take it and if you hang on yeah then we're going to take it and we're going to put a little bit more glue and then we're going to start to wrap it in sort of like an oval pattern um, we just want to cover the end and I did want them to be like a little bit bulby on the ends too um, some of the old wooden sleighs sometimes they had them on there or they would curl back around so I just added it as a flourish but once I had the end covered um, basically taking that diagonal and going left and right back and forth um, then we're just going to go ahead and wrap and I've put this on I think eight times speed because a lot of you want to see me do it and see where I got hung up um, if I get hung up but don't want to sit there and watch me for two hours uh, and I don't blame you but what we're doing is we're wrapping and we've done lots of wrapping techniques with jute before so basically what i like to do is wrap it several times and then sort of push it up towards the work that i've already done as i twist it in the direction um, that it's being wrapped around the pole or stick or whatever now what i did find uniquely with this jute um, and you might find this too so i want to say uniquely but i did start working the jute from the inside of the skein like we would for yarn, but it seemed as though it was getting very twisted up. Now I have think was thinking at first it was because I was hand wrapping it as opposed to spinning the candy cane. Um, but honestly, when I got to the end and I started spinning the candy cane, it was still happening. So what I decided to do was to stretch out, I don't know, a yard or so cut it off and then untwist it and then wrap it that way and it made it a lot easier. I was able to straighten it out if it started to get twisted again. Um, and you don't want it to get twisted because the twisted jute, not that it's objectionable, but it won't fill out as much as when the jute is relaxed. I know that that sounds silly, but I think you kind of get an idea what I mean. Like the more you twist it, the thinner it gets. Um, imagine when we're threading a needle, we want to really like twist it tight. Um, so if you can get it to relax, you won't have to put quite as many um, layers on there or wrap it as many times as I, what I should say. So once I got past the hook, um, I just started to twist the candy cane as opposed to um, wrapping with my hand. And that did make it a lot easier. Um, if I felt like I needed to glue along the way, I did. But really, I didn't feel that with this particular project. Um, and the other thing is, I only am showing you one candy cane, but I will tell you, the second candy cane, I started with the non-hook end, and I wanted to just tell you, comparatively so, I would start with the hook end. It definitely went a lot smoother starting at the hook end than ending on the hook end, if that makes any sense to you. But I both poles, I started and ended the same technique, where I... Um, like you saw in the beginning, 
I glued a little piece, wrapped it a few times diagonally to cover the end, and then went over diagonally in the other direction. Um, and I did that to, to both ends of both candy canes, all right? Start and finish. Um, but you see here, as we start to get to the end, it goes much quicker. Besides the fact that the film is going quicker, it goes much quicker. Because it's so easy to just roll the candy cane in your one hand while you're holding the string on with another. Um, and this is how I knew that the string getting twisted had to do with the manufacturer or the way it was put on this bolt as opposed to um, something I was doing because at first I thought maybe because I was wrapping it it was getting twisted but you'll see here I'm holding the string perfectly still and twisting the candy cane and it's still getting twisted so <laughs> now as far as the candy cane's natural twist it doesn't make a difference which way you go uh, wrapping wise I just found it easier to wrap um to wrap it this way I just kind of like grabbed it and went and I think that's because I'm a righty not necessarily because of which direction the candy cane is twisted okay but you can see here as we start to get towards the end that um, if I run out of string you just add on the next one basically you glue off the end of the first one add a tiny bit more glue and just basically butt them up to each other you can kind of overlap them a little bit uh, but you don't want to have bulk there um, but if you don't have any twist in your jute, then you don't have to even worry about that. You just can go from start to finish. But I can show you here, this is a little bit of what the technique looks like. You kind of just wrap it a few times haphazardly. And then as you start to um, get more and more, you just push it down um, and twist it tight as you go along. Um, and then, when, like I said, this is where I'm going to get towards the end of a piece. And then I'm going to start up with another piece um, just right there where it ended. Okay. And now when we get to the end, we're going to kind of do the same thing we did in the beginning. We're going to start wrapping diagonally. And then we're going to glue as needed. And then while holding that uh, section over the, the end of the piece, we're going to start wrapping it in the other direction. Um, basically kind of making like a, an X. So we're going to go like a few wraps uh, from top left to bottom right and then a few from top right to bottom left. And then you're just going to do this so you can cover the ends over. You could cover the ends over with a piece of burlap if you have trouble covering the ends. You could leave them white and that's fine too. They don't look objectionable. You don't really see them very much. The two ends of the hook ends basically face the sled and the other two are on the floor so... And then we're just going to secure the end piece with some glue. I usually wrap it on top of the glue and then cut whatever's loose. Now I'm burning off all of the fuzzies. I learned this from Melissa from Four Quarter Crafts. I think she's a genius, but I don't know if she invented it. But thank you, Melissa. If you did, I appreciate it. <laughs> um, and now we're going to take the shelf rack. So the shelf rack, we're actually going to wrap all four legs. You're not going to watch me wrap all four legs because we're going to use pretty much the same technique. Um, but first we're going to do is we're going to wrap it in the burlap wire edge ribbon. But if you're going to use this, um, if you want your sleigh to be high off the ground, you're going to attach the four feet to the runners. The runners are the candy canes. Um, if you want it to be lower to the ground like me, you're going to put the rack, attach the rack to the runners. So you want to cover it because otherwise you'd see this white rack underneath. Um, so we're covering with that burlap and we wanted to make it look neat on the underside because that's the side we're going to see. Now I'm wrapping all four legs in jute and I'm not going to let make you sit here and watch me wrap all four legs because this is a very long project as it is. Um, but I'm just doing it the same way we did before. I'm gluing it all the way to the end. I didn't worry about the white tips on this because I am gluing it to that um, cat dish and I'm going to, you're not going to see them, but if you are going to do this, uh, face down, um, just glue all the way till leave your, you know, basically so you don't see the very ends. Okay. You just want to wrap till you don't see the very ends, but I'm going to glue this pan side up and the pan, the cat dish actually sits perfectly between those four legs. If you just, and, and it does, it squeezes the pan in a little bit, but I did was I took a little bit of firm pressure and I spread the legs out just a little bit, ever so slightly. Um, now, because the legs are wrapped in jute and the candy canes are wrapped in, wrapped in jute, you don't need anything more than hot glue because the hot glue will hold jute to jute all day long, all day long. Um, and that's really one of the reasons why we wanted to wrap it. 
I was thinking I would make it look like that candy cane sleigh. I was thinking about even making them look like giant candy bars would look cute. But then I was like, you know what? This would be so much easier to attach. Um, I wanted to make sure that the candy canes were lined up. They basically make sure that they're even. Um, and the one thing I didn't tell you you needed in the beginning, because it's just a, not a necessity, but we're going to add some of the, um, like the wood slats that actually help steer it and support um, the runner. These two were actually left over from the sled project that we did on our channel. I removed them from the Dollar Tree sled and I replaced the um, them on the Dollar Tree sled with incense holders. But here I'm just going to repurpose them. But I wanted to show you that you could use Dollar Tree rulers or Walmart rulers because they are about a foot apart. Um, if you do that and you want to cover them with jute, you can. But what I'm doing is I'm gluing them evenly. Um, I basically took the ruler so that they would be even across. Um, and I'm just gluing it down to the jute. And then I'm just taking a little extra jute and just doing a crisscross wrap over, basically wrapping it uh, a few times in each direction just to make it look pretty and make it look like it's not secured with hot glue. But that's the way that it would have been strapped on by the ancient sled makers. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> now we're going to peel off the sticker from the cat pan. I decided to cut off one of the handles. Um, the reason I did this is because I want the front of my sled to look be smooth and I'll show you when we get to it. Um, but that's all I did to this sled, to this cat tan. The cat tan? Cat pan is I cut off the handle. Um, now, as you can see how it does sit in that rack pretty perfectly. Um, all I did was add a little bit of hot glue to all four um, knobs on the ends just to attach it so it wouldn't move around a lot. I did space it evenly between the front and the back. Um, but before I glued it, I took it to my piece of foam board and I measured. Um, I'm going to create sleigh sides and a back and a front. Um, I'm going to do this with the foam board. So what I did was I laid it down and I just made sure that the sleigh side was wider than the pan. Um, just basically used it for measurement. And then I picked a sleigh shape that I want. This is, you could see how messy you don't use marker. I used marker because you could see it on the camera. I went to Google images. I found different sleighs that I liked that I wanted to emulate that I knew would be easy to cut out. And that's what I picked. Honest to goodness, that's exactly what I picked. I cut out one sort of freehand, and then I just used it to cut out the second one. And they don't have to be perfectly matchy because they do sit about 12 inches apart from each other. Um, but you want them to be pretty close. But, you know, if there's little imperfections, that's okay. So the next thing we're going to do is, this is where you decide, are you going to cover yours in paint? Are you going to cover yours in fabric or contact paper? Or even this wrapping paper technique. So obviously if you cover it with fabric and you're going to use Mod Podge, you can cover it with contact paper. You'll just use the contact paper stickiness. But what I'm showing you here is just another technique. This is the Dollar Tree's wrapping paper. We're going to just cut a piece that's a little larger than the area. We're going to lay the foam piece upside down on the, uh, on the wrapping paper section. And then we're going to use the spray adhesive. Um, and you're going to give it a few seconds to tack up. And then you're going to turn it over onto the wrapping paper. Now, I wasn't 100% caring about bubbles and perfection or any of that stuff because, yeah, it's not all that for me right now. Um, but if you are, then take your time to lay it down. Now, I just wanted to show you there how we work the inside and outside corners. What you want to do is you want to trim, um, go around with your scissor, and make little tiny sections that will fold over. Um, and this way you get really perfect curves. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of paper that is as big, and we're going to spray it with, uh, spray the, the piece with spray adhesive, and then turn it onto the page. And then we're going to cut this out neat. So this is just a nice way of getting nice, edges that are covered and as well as you know a nice neat finish I took my exacto my is not exacto knife I took my utility knife I picked the paper up and I ran the blade flat against the piece of work just to help trim it but you could use your scissor and that's fine too so now I have the pan glued in I have the pan centered left and right and now I'm going to glue the side pieces on um, I didn't show you how we covered both side pieces again because that's just repetitive and this project is long enough. 
um, but I will show you there. All I did was centered it. I put two fingers between the runner and the bottom of the side of the sled and I hot glued to the sled uprights and to the pan, the top of the pan. Now some of the footage did get lost, but I will show you how I'm going to reinforce the glue in a few minutes. Um, but this is where I've decided to create the support that goes across the back. Now you can make this as tall as you want or as short as you want. I may go back and add more. The more I live with this, I realize I probably want more of a closed back. But Jim suggested that we wait till we get our Christmas decor down because I want to sit the Santa in there and I know, like I want to make sure he fits. I don't want to make it too small for him to fit in there. So um, you can make this back as long as you want or as tall as you want to fit up the whole back way if you want to. Find a sled that you like. I found this sled that kind of has the open wings like I left, but there are plenty of images out there on the World Wide Webs. Um, but now we're gonna take the piece of poster board and we're gonna create the front curve. Now you can create the back curve with the poster board as well the same way. Um, and as far as the back piece was, I'm sorry that just like the front piece here, we're covering them with con with the uh, wrapping paper again, spray glue, both sides, um, fitting it over, just wrapping it like you would if it was a really thin piece of paper. I don't know, would you wrap a thin piece of paper for Christmas? I don't know. But anyhow, <laughs> we're just wrapping it over and cutting the edges to make it clean. Then what we're doing is we, we've, the, the piece that was in the back was foam board and we basically glued that on both sides. This piece is a poster board so it's going to be more pliable and what we're going to do is we're going to line it up before we cut it. We're going to glue it to its curves in sections. We want to glue a little bit and then we're going to cut it and then we're going to glue the rest. Um, now just like I am doing here where I'm gluing in from the underside of the material that's how we attached the pan before and I'm sorry that footage got lost but basically I just ran a bead of glue of where the side met the pan and now you can see here I've done that on this side it is a little bit difficult to cut without wrecking your existing paper um, but just take it in sections how do you how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time and it's the best way and then you can go ahead and reinforce with your hot glue and again, this is all just hot glue, and hot glue holds this project together really well. I have picked this thing up and moved it all over my house. Um, so here it is. It's really darling. I love it. I ended up just throwing two of the Dollar Tree's scarves in the pan until I get all my Christmas decor out. But fill it with gifts, with Santa, with toys, whatever you want, with dolls. Jim said it would make a really cute cat toy, a cat bed or a small dog bed, which it would. Um, but I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, and you may, because there was a lot of information in a very short period of time, please leave them in the comments down below. I will answer each and every one of them. And if you guys would love to, if you could share this with friends and family, anybody who might be interested in making one of these or at least seeing one of these. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.